I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm louder and louder gonna hear my praises roll up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive. Hey, it's live, isn't it? <laughs> so, so we had a good, we have a good service today, and um, I'm so grateful. We we have just a, a few more people. I'm just going to call it out because next week, many of you will return to the house of the Lord at our 9 a.m. service or at 10:30 service. We'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, um, our elders are here with me, and I'm not blaming them, but it. It didn't throw me off. I'm glad that they're here. They're a blessing. They're the hallelujah corner for us, and I'm grateful for that today. So let's welcome our first-time guest. If you're watching right now for the very first time, Living Faith Church, we want to welcome you. Yeah, there you are. I hear you clapping. You can clap and cheer. Amen. It's okay. Might as well get used to it. Amen. We're going to be doing that. Amen. So we're honored that you would take time and um, be part. I know many churches are now open and That's a blessing. Some are still holding off, and that's a blessing also. So if you have a home church, um, make sure that you support that home church by watching them online and doing what you're doing and being a blessing to them and waiting for them to open also. We will uh, talk about that in a moment. But if you're visiting for the very first time, you can go ahead and text. Tell us guest, and uh, we, we love to see the comments as you're online with us on Facebook Live right now. Our text number is 210 204 Four four one six, and um, we're grateful. Tomorrow is a very special day. It's Memorial Day, and many of us have had, we have a weekend off, and it's not about the holiday. It's about remembrance, and it's about honor, and it's about the men and women that gave their lives for our freedoms and our country uh, that we have and enjoy uh, even now as we can express the gospel digitally and, and virtually this way. We we're blessed to do that. So just thank God as. As you remember tomorrow and today, the memorial that we set before us are men and women that gave their lives for our freedom. And we're so grateful for those people that have done that and thank God for it. In a moment after our um, time together, I'll take communion with you. So for, what, two months now we've done this. I, I don't know how long, but I've always thought and known in my heart as we've gone into the quarantine time, if if we were able to gather together and break element and bread together. See, next week I'm probably not going to be able to do that because of what all this has to do with even what we've been now the new normal. But I can do it with you in your home right now. And so I pray that you take some bread, get some wherever you're at, and get some juice and get a cup. And uh, let's have communion together at the end of our message and, and, and be blessed. Or you can always rewind this and do it. Later, put your finger on it and go back today. Um, So we're blessed to do that. Amen. I'd like to also tell you about something that you have a serve opportunity uh, with me. This coming Wednesday, uh, we'll meet at 2 p.m. right here at Living Faith Church parking lot. And we'll go to the Alamo Dome. Our district and our community uh, will be serving their um, small businesses that are going to come back. Because we want to make them an economic force right now. Many people have lost their jobs, small businesses right now. And so what we'll do is serve there uh, with our city as we hand out hand sanitizers, gift uh, masks and so forth. And just serve our city in a loving way. Why not living faith showing up in a demonstrative way and just saying we're going to be that church that serves alongside with other city people. Our city council lady has asked us to rise to the occasion. So we're going to be there. Join me. I'll serve. Join me at 2 p.m. We'll go to the Alamo Dome and serve and, and be blessed. Dress appropriately and that sort of thing. And be the witness for Christ. We're Living Faith Church. Uh, faith as we gather, as we grow, and as we go. And we're talking about a go message today. We're, we're all wondering about when it will go back to the, the normal and that sort of thing. I wanted to mention uh, a thought to you. You have about 30 seconds right now, 30 seconds to go in and share this message. You can go and do that. Some of you will lovingly, man, you go, you're going to get the the extra crown in your, in your um, crown and the extra jewel in your crown. 
See, it's live right now. We can't edit that out. The, the jewel in your crown, and you're going to be able to say, hey, you know what? I did this because I did a watch party. This, this one, this diamond that I got in heaven, it was, I got this swimming pool because I shared the message, and it saved this one and that one. And great is your reward. I, I strongly believe that. It's not made up today. So share the message. Text somebody, hey, you got to get on Facebook Live right now. Go to Living Faith SA, uh, and, and you're going to see a message that's going to really change your life and bless you today and encourage you. So do that and do a, do, just do the shout out that you can for us today and make sure that you multiply the message by sharing it over and over this week if you can. I, I know that God did not cause this pandemic because God is good. But God can use even things that are bad and make them. He always does that to the devil. Uh, the devil thinks he's slick. I got him this time. Jesus is dead in the grave three days. His body's starting to deteriorate. But out comes Jesus. Lazarus dead. Uh, blind people. God has a way of reversing the curse. And so I'm so thankful that we're living in that today. And so right now in the middle of your pain. In the middle of things that, that you're wondering about in your head. Because our mind is playing games. I, I notice this. When, when I'm in pain, God speaks the loudest to me. Even at where are you at, God? But God has this ability when it's all over in the stillness of it that God can still speak to me. So God can use pain to speak to us even louder today. And so the earth is shaking and the world's surprised by it, but God isn't. And so I'm so glad that God is still on the throne and those, the people of God are running towards him and we are the people of God. And we are saying, God, you're not shaken by it. God, you're, you're not upset by it. You're not losing sleep. So I need to rest in the Lord today. How about you today? Yes, I want you to get renewed in your spiritual life today. Our, our scripture has been as we kick off and this season has been Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. I use the passion edition there and it says this since we've received our rights as an unshakable kingdom. And isn't that good? The coronavirus has shaken the whole planet. Uh, but we belong to a different atmosphere. We belong to a different people. We belong to a kingdom of God. Somebody hit their neighbor, even if it's in their living room right now, that son or daughter, wake them up. Don't let them sleep on the front row right now as you're, sleep, as you're, as you're in your kitchen right now making the, the pancakes or whatever you might be making. Hey, some of you are doing those lunges right now. You're stretching out to me, and that's a good thing. You're going to stay awake right now. So that's a good thing. It says we, we are extremely thankful and offer the purest worship the delight of our heart as we lay down our life in absolute surrender, filled with awe. And that's the way God is. And that's how grateful we are. Absolute surrender. I'm not going to do it my way. I'm going to do it God's way. I heard you shout amen. You can make it a little bit louder next time. We're not gonna, we're not, God's not nervous and neither are we today. Amen. As kingdom people, act like it. Act like you know what's going on. <laughs> Have you ever seen that guy that acts like he knows, but he doesn't really know? Who is this guy that showed up? You got to be that guy. You got to be that lady. And you, you, you arrive and the kingdom of God operates. The kingdom of God is at hand. That means wherever you go, God goes with you. Give me a good amen. Yes, amen. So God is with you. We're the kingdom people today. And so I have a now word, a message for you from God that's going to bless you and help you right now. The word of God is going forth. We want to come out of the quarantine, but we want to come out of it right and do the right things. Bible people are great people, and they give us examples, believe it or not, of people that came out of quarantine, so to speak. And so I have an example to follow, and that's the word of God. How about you today? Yes. And so Noah came out of a quarantine. The earth was flooded. They finally docked at Mount Ararat, a tall mountain. He came out of quarantine. He did, a, he did one thing that's questionable. I want to look at Noah, what he did. I want to look at Jesus after 40 days and 40 nights of uh, fasting and fighting the devil. And what he did during his time of quarantine. I want to look at the 120 in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, which will be next Sunday as we celebrate it. What they did is they came out of quarantine, a prayer time that they were shut in and believing for the Holy Spirit. Do you understand God does quarantine and he does it for a reason. Job, they said that he suffered during the time of devastating loss. That was about probably nine months, according to theologians, nine months of really losing everything. And then God brought him back a double blessing, double for his trouble. There you are. Amen. And so you have that today. So the, the, the time of shaking really reveals our character. 
in our lives today and what we're made of and what's on the inside of us. And so uh, our normal lives, if something is taken away from us, we replace it with something. And many of us have replaced something with something that's not right. And so what I pray for is that you would not replace it for something that's wrong, but you would fill your lives with something that's right today. And so stand strong. If there's a vacuum that's in your life right now, because things have been replaced by it. You see, the world right now is going through loss. And when they're replacing it right now, never has it been higher than there's domestic abuse, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, a binge of this and that today. Because we're trying to replace something that's empty. The, the stores are being bought out at Lowe's and, and uh, Home Depot. The plant section is gone because... He's a gardener and she's planting an, uh, her, whole gar- her whole backyard is now a garden. And, and so all this, thank, that's, even, that's better, isn't that, than obesity, than eating too much yesterday? The bi- so we look at it and so what is replaced today has to be. I brought an example today to show you and I'm back now. I disappeared just for a second today. And of course, this looks like water because it's in a water, you know, um, bottle, but who knows? It could be turpentine, right? And only what's revealed of it is if I open it and drink it. And I go, hey, this isn't water. It's, it's something poisonous today. And what's revealed sometimes is when it's shaken and pressure's put on it. And if I squeeze this hard enough with all my strength and all these guns that I have right now, if I squeezed it hard enough, come on, somebody help Nava. Amen. Like the power team. Remember them in the 80s? And, you know, and it would explode and those guys would cheer the power team on. They'd do their feats for God. Um, but we know what's on the inside because of pressure. And pressure sometimes produces something from the inside exploding out today. I, I canned soda from the church refrigerator. Thank God for it. Amen. They didn't drink them all. Sunkissed. Amen. I wanted a big red. But it, it, you know what? If this thing got shaken up and you, you ain't a church until somebody opens up a bottle of Sunkissed or big red and it messes up the whole church fellowship. We've had that a couple of times in the history of Living Faith Church, right, Sophie? Yeah, I mean, that, that thing exploded everywhere. Little did we know, they had it in their back seat. They were driving all the way to church. They were shaking it. all, the, And then when it opened, it exploded everything all over the, the chicken casserole or whatever we served that day. But what, what, what would happen if I shook this up? I don't want to get all messy. Uh, you know, I, you know just, if I open this up, I don't want to do that today. In your life right now, when shakings happened on the inside, what pressure comes out of it? And that bad that we put into our lives rises up in our lives. And if we would have had good things in it, and that's what this message is about, when pressure comes upon us, we won't behave like the world. Do you understand that today? And so we have a label on the inside. And so we turn our lives over to something unshakable right now. The inner life of God right now and what we have for us today. Um, I was going this way, but this message alters us today. And now we're going a different direction today. You have three responsibilities before God today that I want you to have. And so number one is this. Go from assuming something to appreciating it. Do you understand that today? We assume a lot. I assumed that there was going to be a lot of toilet paper after the first week of the pandemic, right? Little did I know, and we were looking everywhere for it. I, re- I assumed that m- my favorite restaurant was always going to be open. And little did I know, they would close, and there would just be curbside, and even that uh, was even closed for a while. I assumed, God forgive me, that the church would always be open. Yeah. I was saying, man, I need a vacation. I've been preaching since January. I need a little bit of time. I may never take another vacation again because I, I miss the family. I, the, the, not the building, the people of God now. And so I, I wanted, we, we had this thought, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go do this and that. And that was all taken away from us during this time today. We, we assume that we'll all, it'll always be there. It's always going to be there. It's always going to be there today. And so today, I want to raise the value of, th- of things that, that I need to appreciate. And there's this quality of just gratitude that we have in our lives today. And um, 1 Corinthians 4, 7, the Living Bible speaks of it. It says, why are you so push, push, puffed up today? And it's me, me, myself. I got this thing going on. 
And, and so hear this, and it says, what do you have? And he's speaking to Christians today. What do you have that God hasn't given you? And these are God's people today. And, it, and if you have everything from God, why do you act, though, as you've accomplished it all on your own today? And so I want to thank the Lord right now with you. I want to thank the Lord right now for my wife, because God's provided that for me and blessed me with it more than I'd ever expect. I want to thank the Lord for my son and daughter. I want to thank the Lord for my church family. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Right now, would we just give God just five seconds of thanksgiving right now? Enter the house of the Lord with thanksgiving and lift your hands right now, even where you're at right now. Lord, I thank you for the things that I have. Lord, I thank you, God. I have more than enough clothes, God, today. I have, Lord, a relationship, Lord, with, with those that love me the most, and I love them the most, Lord. How grateful uh, uh, am I am, Lord, now to you. My gratitude towards you, Lord, is over, over, overflowing right now. Thank you, God. You've been good to me right now. Thanksgiving makes you right now. It makes even what you have enough. Do you understand that today? I, I have more than enough. Even what I have, God, now it's more than enough right now because I thank you for it. You develop an attitude of gratitude. I never will forget years ago as a younger man, as a youth pastor, driving uh, kids in a 15-passenger van to a colonia in Matamoros, Mexico, right outside Brownsville. And um, we were going to build a house. And I thought, well, we're going to need some blueprints, and it's gonna, we're going to need a lot of help. With, these kids can't do all that. The 15 uh, youth that we took uh, to do that. <laughs> well, they had everything ready, the missions organization. And they bought their supplies at their local, their Home Depot or whatever. And they brought them and they laid them right there. But one thing I noticed the first time that we pulled up in that colonia, that neighborhood, which was just a, a housing project worse than, than, than I'd ever seen here in America, was the, the dilapidated homes, people living in cardboard, people that had gotten refrigerator uh, cardboards and put them together and made a house out of it. And then I started noticing a church in the middle that didn't have a, a roof on it, but cinder blocks, and they were believing God for the roof. But they met there every Sunday. And the house that we were going to build was for a lady and her family. And her husband was a rebellious man that some, sometimes came to church and didn't come to church um, because he had a drinking habit and that sort of thing. And was, was just, that was his vice and so forth. But this lady served the Lord. So the pastor of that community wanted to, so here's these, this youth group. And I, I just remember as we built that home and they told us how to do it and put the front door. Hey, I put the doorknob on that home, um, which was, by the way, just a basic shed. Even a shed that you have in your backyard was better than they had. But when that family went in, that family of three without the father, yeah, they were blessed. They were crying. They, they said it, it, was, it was the best house, that shed on the block. And it just filled my, when I went back to my apartment, because that's what we had where we were serving at, at, as youth pastors in that community, I was so grateful for my apartment. See, because we had a swimming pool. Everybody used it, but it was everybody's swimming pool in that apartment. I was so grateful that we had carpet on the floor. Do you understand that today? And I had cabinets and I had all the, the blessings of God upon my life. And that we, we developed, because we go from assumption we go to appreciating things that we have. Are you in the house of the Lord today, in your living room today? I journaled this past week, and I saw that the Apostle Paul was uh, so grateful that he, um, to people around him, that he said, would you pray for me? Paul didn't have an independent spirit. He needed people to get to the next level, and so do you. You, it's all about relate in appreciating those people in your life, the gift of God that He's provided for you. Portfolio, um, I haven't used him in a while. Um, remember him? Well, he's been in quarantine, and so he finally got out of quarantine, and he was late for a meeting, and uh, he was trying to find it, find find a parking space because he was trying to park right in front because he was late. And as he was driving up into the parking lot, I said, "Lord, you know I'm late, but if you give me a parking space right in front, uh, Lord." Um, and all of a sudden, as he just pulled up, he saw a car pulling out right in front, and he said this, he said, Lord, never mind, I got it, I got it on my own, thank you, and he pulled up into that, and so you, do you understand how that can be just like us, that God provides and we don't even acknowledge him, God's been good to us and we don't say thank you, Lord, for the many blessings, even a simple parking space, right, 
There's a man in the Old Testament was kind of like that. He never acknowledged God and he was a mighty man. He built architectural wonders and he was a mighty king of just. But he got so puffed up. His name was King Nebuchadnezzar. Never name your pit bull Nebuchadnezzar or that German shepherd Nebuchadnezzar. And he, he was very proud, very self-centered. He, when he wrote about himself, he would I, I, I and this so forth. He was during the time of Daniel. And Daniel tried to even warn him. Daniel tried to say, hey, you got this warning. The handwriting's on the wall, bro. You better, you better you know, check yourself before you wreck yourself. But Nebuchadnezzar still kept on with pride. He kept on with pride. The, the, the veil was lifted on that man. He became like a wild animal. And it was prophesied that he would become. Man, Old Testament's rough, right? He became like this man eating. For seven years, he lost his mind. He lived with wild animals. He ate like an ox uh, from Grant and so forth. He was on all fours. Can you imagine? No longer. A pe- Can you ima- That's the equivalent of a president of the United States losing his mind and living out in the woods doing crazy things and building whatever. Uh, This is what happened to Nebuchadnezzar because of his pride. The Bible says after seven years, look what happened, this beautiful scripture of what happens with restoration. Not like um, it was, you know, well, I I suffered all this time. This is what he had had enough. Daniel 4, 34 on the screen. And at the end of time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, finally, he finally sees the light, raised my eyes. In other words, he went back to God today and my sanctity was restored my family relationships I'm believing right now that they're going to be restored in your home today the 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 relationships that need it's not God's will for divorce to take place in the name of Jesus at all costs we pray for that marriage what God has brought together let no man put asunder right now I believe your health is coming back it's being restored right now sanctity is coming back your mind your here. Then I praised the Most High and I honored and glorified him who lives forever. You notice it's not about him anymore. And his dominion is an eternal dominion and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. As much as we think we're all that, we need to bow before God. We need to say, God, you're the maker right now. We go back to God. We dedicate every part of our lives to God. Everything that we have is from the Lord today and it returns to the Lord. The second thought is this. Go back, go from scatter to gather today. We've been at quarantine at home. We've had to gather. It Maybe it took this for us to get back home and to enjoy the family that God has brought us together with. The primary relationships that we should have in our lives today. Our loved ones today. Um, the disconnection that we had once in our family, now we eat more together. We have dinner together. We have to eat leftovers together. Isn't that good? Yeah, you borrow her teeth, I'll borrow them, and we'll share them today. We'll eat the Happy Meal together today. And so there's more time in the Bible that we have, a devotion that we can have that time because God has taken some things on pause and we put things on pause today. In Ecclesiastes 4.8, the easy read version, which I love, amen. Yeah, went to Judson High School. Amen. Give me a good own public school. I'm proud of it today. There was a man all alone. And he neither he neither neither had a son nor brother, and there was no toil to the end of his toil. Yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling? he asked. And why am I depriving myself of the enjoyment? In other words, the work that he was doing was dominating his life. And God never intended for your work to dominate your life. You're meant to enjoy your life in God today. And so he said this. He said, this too is meaningless, a miserable business. And I'm so thankful. The slide that I'm about to show you is the solution. And here's the solution right now. Two are better than one because they have the good return on their labor. If one of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and no one can help them up. And though he's been overpowered, look at the protection right now in the scripture, the the protection of God, how God has surrounded us with relationships that are godly today, right relationships. Two can defend themselves in a cord of three strands cannot easily be broken. Well, Jesus spoke about this, didn't he? Wherever two or three are gathered, there's protection because you know why? I'm there. Jesus is there, right? 
And when Jesus is there, it's a mighty force right now. Value your godly relationships. Value your godly family today. today, And God will provide for you. Reach out to somebody and encourage somebody that's in your circle of influence. Reach out to somebody and sow into their lives today. Uh, determine to have that relationship with God. Irma and I are in our best season right now. And I'm not going to embarrass her. Sister's on the front row, but I am going to embarrass her, and it's okay today. And my life has never been better. And you know why? Because three months ago or two and a half months ago, she does better on dates on that. <laughs> she came home with her computer from work and all the essentials, the Wi-Fi that she needed to plug into and the desk. We bought her a fancy desk. No, don't talk. Don't. She'll testify about that. Just all the stuff that she needed to get set up with. But I, I started noticing this cute girl in my home. <laughs> I started noticing this, this girl I could flirt with uh, in, in my home as I went by her desk. And that was my wife. And I rediscovered her because we have this time now. It's been the most beautiful thing. I, I don't want to lose that. I know she's probably going to have to go back to her office and that sort of thing. But I so enjoy her being at home with me. And that's what determines from being scattered to being gathered today. The, the life that we can either, we can go through life or we can go grow through life. We can go through life or we can grow through life. And we want to grow together. And life is better during the season. As I looked out my window um, this season, how many have seen the people walking around in your neighborhood? Family strolls together, uh, riding bikes. You people that are on the Leon Creek Trail right now, you're walking, you're messing up my bike time. I, have to, I almost hit you the other day. Uh, I'm glad that you're walking, but can you walk somewhere else? And you've messed up my trail, and i got to find a new one today. So enough about me. Y'all pray for inner healing right now. I don't, Ephesians 4, uh, 414, there you are, Message Bible. I love the translation of this. I love the scripture. No prolonged infancies. In other words, <laughs> you got to grow. In God, you can't stay four. You can't stay five years old. You got to go to spiritual college. God wants you to grow, grow, grow for it today. God is saying even please grow up right now. Uh, we, tolerate, we do not tolerate babes in the woods. Small children are an easily marked for an imposter. And again, the primary relationship of the, the primary function of the church is never to, that the saved are coming in here. I'm glad for that. The people that are not born again, they get born again. We do that. But the primary mission of the church is that you would mature as saints, that you would grow in the things of God, that you wouldn't be the same that you were last year in the time that you have, that God would grow you spiritually. Amen. We go to college now. This is the next level. Maybe this time has taken place so we can grow in God even more from Scattered to be and gathered as a people. God wants you to grow up. And the whole truth is to tell love like it is. Like Christ and everything. We take the lead from Christ. Who is the source of everything. We keep in step with each other. There's the army of God. The family of God. With every breath and the, the blood flows through us. Nourishing that we would grow up healthy in God. Robust in love. Use your gift. Everyone has a precious gift. That they can use for God. Everyone has something that they've been giving divinely from God that they can uh, make it happen today. How easy it is that you can encourage somebody on Zoom now. You don't have to get dressed up. All you got to do is turn on your phone, hit the Zoom app, and there you are, boom, in a Bible study. And you can encourage each other by being in a Bible study. Take the step of faith. Real growth happens when you're together today. There's a precious story um, about Vacation Bible School. We've had them here at Living Faith. God help us because we've had Vacation Bible School <laughs> at Living Faith. Army of kids come in. Thank God for it. Well, this particular one um, was done in five days of EBS. And at the end of the fifth day, uh, this little boy had missed all the EBS. He came in for the last Friday. And his name was Davy, And Davy came in and the pastor brought him in to the, the teacher of that group of third graders. And he said, you know, uh, Davy's going to be in your class. And so you take him and he looked a little bit shy. But the teacher noticed something about him 
right away. And she was kind of horrified or didn't know how to handle it because she was a little bit new. She had volunteered and so forth. Uh, Davy was missing his left arm. It had been amputated. And she says, oh, no, what am I going to do? The kids are going to make fun. And she was just didn't want him to get ridiculed about his arm and so forth. So she sat him next to uh, Lisa and Lisa was sitting right there next to him. And she said, just sit here. And so the activities went forth all day long. They went inside. They ate pizza. They had a blast. Those kids were everywhere. And so she kind of forgot about Davy and Lisa and the whole situation about just not wanting to embarrass him. Well, at the end of the closing of that VBS, they would do this um, this little thing that they would do about here's a church, here's a steeple, open the door and here are the people. And so it would go like this. Here's the church, uh, here's the steeple, open the door and here are the people. But you need two hands to do that. And she kind of thought, well, as she was doing it and leading the class and everybody was doing it, yeah, it's our favorite time because we're about to go home. And <laughs> she says, oh, no, Davy doesn't have his left arm. And as she looked over there and thought through it, as she was saying, here are the people, she saw Lisa going, here, Davy, let's put your hand, your right hand with my left hand, and let's come together and do the church together. Let's, here is the church, here is the steeple. Together they were doing it. And he opened the door, and here are the people. And so with hand to hand, his hand, her hand, um, they made the church. And that's what the church is about. The church is about you coming together, gathering together with people. And your weakness is probably discovered because they had a weakness just like you. And you are covered by the blood of Jesus, and they cover you, and they encourage you. And they said, you're going to make it because I was once weak like you, and now I am strong today. The Bible says that one can put a thousand to flight, but two... <laughs> can put 10,000 to flight. Coming together is powerful. Coming together is strong today. It's pleasant to God. Psalms 123, the Bible says this, how good and pleasant it is when brethren and sistren dwell together in unity. It's a beautiful thing when people come together in unity today. It's a gathering of purpose today. It's a gathering of power today when we gather today. I can't wait to see you next week as we gather in the house of the Lord together. I want you to discover the reason why God created you. It's to be a helping hand. It's to extend your hand and to help people. You weren't meant to do life alone. You were meant to do it with people today. Finally, number three is this. Go from doing church, do church, to be the church. And that's been our mantra at Living Faith since we've uh, started over 20 years ago. We've always said we're going to be a church that reaches people. We're going to be a church that uh, the four walls are great that we have and we have a beautiful sanctuary. But the church is really outside of the four walls. And we've had a pause right now to reflect where we're at, what we should be doing. I love doing Bible studies on the inside of these rooms. I love it. But you know where I grow the most? Where my muscles spiritually get stronger? When I'm doing something for God. When I'm moving and serving people and helping people. I can do that by teaching a Bible study. But I can also do it by serving the students at John Jay. By being a blessing uh, to the, the homeless community with Juan and B as I, as I serve with them. So you go outside today and you smile at people and you love people because no one has a smile like you. You encourage people. You extend your hand. You're the light of the world, Jesus said. You're that city built, built on a hill. And so you can't put that lamp under a lampstand today because it's supposed to illuminate everything in your community. Your neighborhood got better because you moved in. Your block got better. Your apartment complex got better because God's people moved in there today. There's an order today about doing good, and it's first that you come to Christ. Because if we don't come to Christ, you know what happens? We try to do stuff and get, get our way to heaven. I've been a good boy. I'm better than he is. I'm better than they are. They're not in church today. No, come to Christ. Come to Christ first, and then do the work of God. Because God has this way that you identify him. I serve, I serve people, Jesus said. I washed feet. You wash feet in the form of service today. 
In Ephesians, as I conclude, it says this. Ephesians 2.10, the Message Bible. God created each of us by Christ Jesus by joining him to do the work that he does. God does the work and you do it. And it's called good work, so you have to go do the work. And he's gotten us ready to do it. And work, we work better by doing it today. There's evidence in your life by doing the work of God because you're God's chosen people today. It's time to serve again. God has planned a good work for your life today. And so you should have an expectation of just not looking around and just saying, you know what, I'm divinely connected. What blessing is coming next right now? Where can I serve? What can I do today? Repentance, it means to go a different direction. Repentance means I was going this way, but now I got to go this way. And God turns it around, and that's what repentance does. It changes our pattern in life. And right now, do you, do you receive the word of God? Hear an amen. Yeah. So in the name of Jesus, receive the word of God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now for the people of God. Living faith right now. They're, they're called living faith for a reason today. And the Holy Spirit right now would come and pull up right now into their driveway of their home right now. Holy Spirit, come. Go into the kitchen. Go into the area that we're at, Lord. We're gathered right now. Lord, would we turn to you, not from myself right now. Would we show me areas right now that are being shaken right now in my life so I can turn towards you right now. Thank you, Father. We want right relationships in our lives today. Help me to be grateful right now. Help me not to assume, but to appreciate. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. If you need to grow during this season right now, and if you need to be the hands and feet of Jesus, especially during this time, it's not about you. It's about God right now. Would you just lift your hand? I know it's a little bit awkward right now. You may be in your living room and um, you may be in your kitchen. You may have to put that exercise. You're doing planks, but you're getting up right now. You're lifting your hand. You're saying, I want to become the light of the world. I need to do the assignment of God for my life today. God's gifted you to do something. You should use your gift for God. Today, if that's you, I want to pray for you. Father, touch the people of the Lord. We are the hands and feet of Jesus on this earth. And never has there been a darker time in our culture that we've lived through that people need to see God in action, God with skin on. And that's us, Lord. Help us to be the good neighbor, to love people and do what you've told us to do, to love the neighbor as ourselves today. We thank you today, Lord. Father, seal the blessing and we can't expect we, we, we expect growth to come right now in our lives today because we're putting you first. You're in your life. You're, 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 you're bowed right now before God. And there's a question I need to ask you about your life and how it's gone. And this message has convicted you and you sense it in your heart today. You have a bad maybe habit right now. You have a bad attitude. You're far from God. And God's not going to chase you down. It's an absolute surrender that you have to do. God loves you. It's a plan for your life. But if you want to keep going the same route, that's okay. God leaves you and he, he waits for you patiently. But this is the moment of favor for your life today. This is where God says, do you want a different life? Do you want a better life? Do you want God to come into your family today? It starts with you, Dad. It starts with you even as a teenager, as it was in my life. God came to my home and visited our home because I, I surrendered to Jesus today. It can begin right now. You'll make a prayer like this. Surrender to the Lord. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean, Jesus, with your precious blood. I need you, Lord, today. I need you more than I need anything else right now. Give me life and life abundant. Thank you for the cross of Christ today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And that's good news. You know why? Because God still loves you. And God still has a plan for you. And God wants to use you today. There's redemption. In the heavens, angels are celebrating. Man, they're partying down right now. They're going, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Because somebody came to Christ. Would you let me know about that? Because we want to celebrate. There's ways on the screen that you can do that. Send me a text. Let me know that you got saved. We want to send you something today. But you have to let us know that you're saved. Do it by the text phone. If you do it by Facebook Live, then it's going to be tough. But go ahead and take that, that text phone down and send us that information. If you have a prayer request, you have a question, we're here to answer you today. In the name of Jesus, yes, amen and amen. 
do it, do it, do it. Yes, amen. I want you to receive communion with me. Would you gather the elements? You have about 30 seconds to do that. I'll pause. And I'm so grateful for Chuck and Katrina uh, being with me this morning. Um, and uh, sorry, guys, man, I kind of, you know, I just didn't have everything ready today. And I don't know what I did. And, you know, uh, thank God it's going to be better. Amen. Give me a good amen. You guys have helped me out so much. It wasn't your fault. It was my fault. Amen. So you have your element ready today. And you can come. We can set up. Amen. I'm not going to bite you. Okay. One time I did. I'm sorry I did bite you. <laughs> so we're blessed. Amen. Hey, we, we can't take that back today. Amen. <laughs> you have your communion element ready. I, I meditated on this and I thought about um, what we do and how we break the bread. And I thought about over and over how, again, well, Jesus' body was broken for us. And I thought about all the people of living faith on how nobody's perfect in the room. I mean you in your living room. No one's perfect in your kitchen area. We're all broken before God. But there's some, something significant that when we come together as family, when we take this, even right now where you're at today, that when we break bread, that it unifies us. And we look around, hey, you're broken. I'm broken. And um, we need God today. So we're broken before God today. And only He can mend us. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he lifted up bread and he broke it. And he said, take and eat of this bread. This represents my body. We take and eat the bread for healing in our lives, for wholeness. Let's not forget the benefits now as we chew the bread. The benefit of healing. God, you're healing somebody's mind right now, their emotional state. And depression has to leave. It has no place in the child of God right now. Autoimmune disease, uh, cease your activity within that individual. Cancer, stop right now in the name of Jesus. I command you, the broken bread represents my wholeness right now. My authority to take benefits right now from the cross. The stripes of Christ heal everyone right now taking this meal. It's a powerful meal right now. I receive diabetes, cease right now. I silence you. I shush you right now. You have no authority in that believer's life today. In the name of Jesus. You see how important this meal is to take every day. Even without a pastor doing You can take this at your home. Walk it through. Rebellion right now. That brokenness right now is coming together in Jesus' name. You're being restored. You're being restored. You're being restored right now. Because the body of Christ right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Coronavirus has no authority in my life in the name of Jesus. We're healed of it today. Even if there's symptoms, you take this bread. Thank you, Lord. In like manner, he lifted the cup and he said, this is my blood that's poured out for you in the remission of your sins. Take it as a symbol of the new covenant today and do this in remembrance of me. Let's take all of Jesus today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that I'm in the right relationship. This is the right time. I'm in the right place, the right moment. I'm with the right people right now. Yeah, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus right now. Through God in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord, the right moment. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we bless the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may rest your bodies, amen, if you're in the living room or, hey, I never got up. It's okay. Go ahead and keep sitting down. Yeah, it's all good. I want to speak uh, about the giving to the local church, the storehouse today. And I brought a, a, a great example today. Um, our friends from Florida, the Hayes family, th they sent a bunch of pancake mix because they know that we're reaching and we're connected with people that are feeding hungry people that are on the streets of San Antonio in our community. And so from their Sam's Club, they sent it all the way to San Antonio because they want to be part of something today. And so we want to thank you. They also sent some beans and canned beans are great and they're non-perishable. And so we're serving people. We're loving people today. And if this is your local church, again, give to it. Because it reaches people. We're the hope of the community. Without resources, 
we, we can't do the work of God and we want to do the work of God and you're, you're doing that. It's just an example right there what, how people are giving today. If this isn't your local church, I haven't done this in a while because of the condition that we've been in. If, if we're, you're just checking, give to your local church. They need it right now. But if we're your local church, this is where you're, what you return back to God that's his anyway, the tenth or the above and beyond that, the love offering. Well, I'm going to give towards um, the, you know, uh, the homeless. Yeah, but tithe first. Give God the tenth first. Amen. Thank God for the clothing closet. Amen. But give your tithe first. Amen. And above and beyond that, you give your love offerings. And you know that already. Let's go ahead and pray for the tithe and the offering right now. Bless the people of the Lord. I thank you, God, for them as they bring their seed back to God today. That you'll do what a seed is meant to do, Father. It's in the ground. It doesn't die. Thank you. We fertilize it with the word of God. We fertilize it in good ground. And this is good ground. We thank God for it. The accountability that we have in this house in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. It's supposed to grow. Thank you. It grows for them, Lord. It comes back. Return back to them. Double portion, God. Thank you for the blessings of God right now that add no sorrow to the gift and the giver. You can give your tithe and your offering several ways uh, on the screen. You can do that via text. You can go on our website. You can mail it in. Um, so do what you do, and God bless you as, you as you do that before the Lord. And we're so grateful we do this because we love our church and we love our God today. Amen. I want to just pray the blessing upon you. We're going to worship God. Would you stand to your feet one more time with me? And just as we bless you out right now, we bless the Lord right now. We thank you. The countenance of God. Thank God the face of God is looking right at you. And I used to be scared of God, but not anymore. <laughs> because God is good. And this is what he proclaims over you and your children's children. The blessing of God for a thousand generations right now. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face towards you. And the Lord give you his peace. And thank God for the peace of God right now. There's nothing better than this moment right now. Would you worship God? Send out, shout out, send you out into the mission field and bless you and that sort of thing. So join us right after service today. But God bless you as you worship God. This is one of my favorite songs. I love the way it sounds. You said, man, pastor, you said that last week. That was your favorite. No, this is one of my favorite. This is like in the top five. We sing it a lot. Amen. And I get my way. No, I don't. Anyway, but we sing it. Amen. Let's sing the song of the Lord right now. All right, well, as we get ready to do this song, I just want to encourage you, wherever you are, even in this building, I know there's a few of us here that uh, we kind of got the soundstage uh, amendment earlier, but when we sing this song, just go ahead and rattle the building. Go ahead and shake it down to the foundation. If that's what God wants, he'll put another one up. And if you're at home, this may be the last time that you sing from your living room. You may, you know, everything may just work out great. And we're going to be here moving forward, so... Let your neighbors wonder what's going on in your living room. One, let them wonder why you're so excited about God when everybody else is so scared about everything. And as we go through this week, just remember that tomorrow is Memorial Day. It's not the time to thank a veteran. It's the time to remember somebody who gave their life. Amen. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe you are my fortress, you are my portion, you are my hiding place, yeah. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life, I believe you are the way. The truth, the light. Through every blessing, through every promise, through every breath I take, I believe you are provider, you are protector, 
You are the one I love, and I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you, cause you meet me here each day with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come to, cause they can't stay long when I'm here with you. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. Cause you meet me here each day with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come to. Cause they can't stay long when I believe you are the way, the truth, the lie. I believe you are. Go in the love of the Lord. Spend the rest of this week just worship Him. Give Him everything you got. Celebrate that we're going to reopen and we're going to come together again. Amen.